Welcome to the Community Forum. I, my name is John Goliatino and I'm your host. This evening uh, we're changing gears. It's been a while since we t talked to anyone in the, uh, from the field of chiropractic, uh, especially with this variation. Um, Jared DiLorenzo uh, is a doctor of chiropractic, but he's also a specialist in, uh, in the diet aspects of it, you know, having chiropractic and, and also uh, working it together with diet, having a, a role, in it, an important role in it. So we're going to be exploring that topic tonight so thanks for tuning in and want to welcome you to the show thanks for having me John. Thank All right. you. yeah, you're welcome before we get into uh, we got a little bit of a uh, agenda so to speak mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself how you came to this area your educational background and um, sure, how long you've been uh, in your business great um, I've been practicing chiropractic for about four years now um, I'm here with dr. Minone he's been a veteran of the area so to All speak right. he's been around here for 30 years um, had my undergraduate from Quinnipiac University, so I love Connecticut. Um, and I play, actually played Division One soccer there. Then went off to New York Chiropractic College in upstate New York in Seneca Falls. And uh, got my gr uh, chiropractic degree in 2007 and has been, have been practicing since. So I love what I do. You know, thank you for the introduction. And you know, tonight especially I want to talk about the role nutrition plays when it comes to chiropractic. And you know, one of the reasons I became a chiropractor Fine. was that it's a lifestyle. Um, it's not just adjusting the spine, which is a major role but it encompasses, you know, we kind of, you know. Well, first, let's touch on chiropractic anyway. Sure, sure. The, the whole idea of it, uh, maybe I should let you do the explaining, mm -hmm. but I, the, the general concept as I uh, understand it is you have blockages, right. like you know, my lower back, L1 they call it, there you go. from time to time gets jammed up mm -hmm. and it gives me problems and if I go to the chi a chiropractor and he unjams it, then right. all of the flow goes through the entire body and, uh, you know, it gets the electrical electrons moving, and uh, there isn't any more uh, pain from that area, mm -hmm. and I'm feeling good. A better That's description than I could have done, John. Uh, okay. that... <laughs> but you know, in a nutshell, to keep things very simple, yeah. um, you, know, you have these 24 vertebrae in the spine, right. um, each moving six planes of motion, and like you said, they get they get blocked, so to speak. These joints get fixated. When they're fixated, you know, a number of different things can happen, but neurologically, right? It, you, get basically a pinched nerve. Um, it decreases the amount of electrical impulses that are carried across that nerve and can uh, and, you know, affect essentially the function of whatever that nerve controls, including your internal organs. Um, and so and by that might be the, uh, let's say, your digestive function, and that's that's also where diet comes in. 100% right. And right. even that patient just came in earlier, has you know has lower back issues, and now he has constipation associated with that, right. or urinary um, issues too as well. So it does coincide. So when we adjust the spine, essentially we're taking the pressure um, off these nerves by restoring function to these motion segments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what made you uh, get involved with the diet aspects? Uh, is because there's like a natural it's, tendency one uh, uh, complements the other? It, it, would you say exactly? As chiropractic, we look at the entire body. So you know, every chiropractic college goes over nutrition in, um, very intensely. And you know, this is one of the reasons I became a carpenter because it is a lifestyle. I can apply this to my life. You know, we kind of kid around our office called the dream lifestyle. You know, right. D stands for the diet aspect of it, and tonight right. we'll talk about more of the anti-inflammatory diet aspect. Um, R stands for rest. E is exercise. A is spinal alignment, and M is positive mental attitude. So addressing all these areas is important to a wellness lifestyle. Right. So the. Uh the inflammation that goes with, let's say that jam, jamming up, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. what that basically is. I, I may have reached too far and, uh, and uh, re-hurt that area, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and that causes inflammation, right? So Correct, there is an inflammatory response. Uh, like right, okay, and then there's an acute and a chronic. Right, so here's where you want to be aware there's, you know, inflammation is necessary for the body. Um, it is necessary for the healing process to take place. Uh, but there's the acute, you know, like you said, you have an injured back. What do you when get? You, when you first injure it, that's the acute? Cor correct. You, ah, you got the acute and, phase. <laughs> and that, that's, wow. that's when you go every day for a while and, right. uh, until the thing subsides and it gets under control. Yeah, here, correct. Right. And there's redness, swelling, and usually loss of function associated with right. that. Those are kind of the cardinal signs of inflammation. Right. The problem, and where especially the dietary aspect comes into it, is when you step into that chronic inflammatory stage where... Um, you know, the, the body itself, it's, it's almost silent. There's only, there really are not many symptoms associated with it until there's loss of function at the end stages. Um, so a lot of people are oh, unaware okay. they're in a chronic state of inflammation until there's, you know, almost it's too late or there's a major chronic or crisis. Like in the case of my, uh, is that when they, uh, you have um, 
What do they go? Sciatica? Pain mm -hmm. running down well, your leg? Or right. is that even worse? That could still that? be in the acute stage. Yeah, that's oh, part okay. of the acute stage. But even how about certain diseases is, is really important. Yeah. The chronic inflammation associated with many of the diseases we have today, such as cancer. I mean, that's a big one. Heart disease, another big one. How about autoimmune diseases, MS, um, Alzheimer's, um, ar arthritis. I mean, these are very common um, chronic conditions we have today. And people have to be aware that what they put into their mouth, you know, food and the dietary aspect can either um, help uh, these help these processes heal or actually attribute to the you know worsening of the disease, so to speak. So it's very important people understand that. Okay. Um, what foods? There are actually foods that cause mm -hmm. inflammation. What right. foods are more likely to cause inflammation, or are there just certain foods that cause inflammation and other foods that don't cause inflammation? Right, there's both. There's pro-inflammatory foods and anti-inflammatory foods, and you know, it's a great question. Unfortunately, the average American diet consists of a lot of inflammatory foods which enhance or promote these chronic diseases. Now, the, to kind of bring it to basis, most people are familiar with omega-3s and omega-6s. Right. Um, these are fatty acids the body needs, but they need to be in the correct ratios, and that's the problem with today's diet. You know, it should be in a one-to-one -one ratio as, as much as possible, you know, close to uh, as you can get that. The average American diet is a 25-to-1 omega-6 to omega-3, and omega-6s are inflammatory. You know, these foods are... Let's are have examples of it because someone says, geez, I don't remember I know, the last time I had an omega-6. Yeah, and watch, <laughs> it's going to be what everybody eats every day. Is that like a hamburger at McDonald's, which a lot of people out yes, there have? Yes, yes, yes. Unfortunately, uh, all the fast food, without a doubt. All and, the fast foods. You know, people know it's not good for yeah. you. But sometimes they just, they don't understand why. And increasingly, even things like chicken nuggets, oh, they got the, exactly. uh, the they got that stuff that they what do they call it? silicone? Yeah, it's mystery they, meat in there. You really yeah, they, they, you, there. Who, you didn't know that that was there. You know, something was right. holding that thing together. Exactly. You didn't know until it was just re recently revealed. Processed. They uh, they spray this silicone to hold the thing together. So right. he's like, what's safe to eat now? <laughs> <laughs> Not Every, much, no. But I'll go yeah. over that too as well because when I right. even discuss it with my patients, they yeah. they freak out and they're like, oh my god, I can't eat anything now. Thanks, Dr. D. And you know, we kind of joke about it, but then I always give them options. There are plenty of options out there. But other foods that are inflammatory, yes, all the fast foods, stay away from it. It's not good for your health. Um, it produces something called arachidonic acid. Um, and this is a, an, a precursor to inflammation. And these are the inflammatory cells that damage your internal organs. Now, other foods some people aren't aware of are whole grains. I mean, people think they're really good for you. You know, fortunately, in smaller quantities, you know, you've got to be careful eat, consuming a lot of whole grains. They do have more omega-6s to omega-3s. Some people out there are saying, what do you mean whole grains? I eat Cheerios every day. You're exactly <laughs> right. I know. I lowered my cholesterol by four points. Give me a break. <laughs> okay. But, you know, it's, it's inflammatory. Anything made with flour basically is inflammatory. Really, our bodies are not designed to handle these foods in large quantities. Um, sugar is a major one. I mean, the average American consumes about 180 pounds of sugar per year. Um, that so just came out this past week. It was on one of the news shows. It's, uh, that it, they're, they it's, th it's being recommended by scientists mm -hmm. that it be treated like alcohol and... It uh, is an addiction. You're exactly right. Yeah, it's an addictive thing that doesn't do any good for the body. Right. And, uh, and it happens too, you know, yeah. when people you know, talk about these addictive foods, these the comfort foods. Well, there, there's a physiological response to that. When you eat these foods, they're mostly sugar and carbohydrates. Well, your body has to pump out, your pancreas has to pump, that pump out insulin in order to bring um, that glucose or the sugar into the cell. And therefore, having high amounts of insulin circulating affects your brain function, actually increases serotonin production in the brain. That's why these are considered the feel-good foods or the comfort foods. So that's another is one. Is that, that what that? That's how physiology works. Yeah, that's that why is. you get that yeah. sugar high or exactly. whatever. Exactly, and then you're crashing, you know. Yeah, and then you <laughs> and crash then after. Yeah, geez, I had that cheesecake. I was fine. Now I'm in the dumps. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and and yeah. got another major one um, is, unfortunately, and it will lead into in our discussion on what we feed our livestock. Um, the, you know, derivatives are of inflammation, corn, soy, the oils are, are a major one. Corn oil, soybeans, safflower, sunflower, all these oils are detrimental to your health. They are, you know, pro-inflammatory oils. Well, the FDA has taken some of that out, you know. The, not enough. But not <laughs> enough. Unfortunately. Yeah. And it's, it's just even eating the foods. Here's a problem where we step into our livestock. Um, here was a research study done um, by the National Academy of Science in 2008. So corn or corn oil, doesn't really matter, produces with, remember that arachidonic acid which we discussed before, and that produces inflammation in the body, hence leading to these diseases. Now, the, these pro-inflammatory foods, or what we're feeding our livestock, such as we feed them corn. I mean, they're not supposed to eat that. That's not their natural diet. 
According to this study, the National Academy of Science in 2008, 100% of commercially bought chickens are fed 100% of the time corn until they're slaughtered. I mean, they're not supposed to eat that. 93% of cattle are fed corn 100% of their, their dietary life. Um, and fish. So you, is what you're one. saying is that corn should really be used for uh, fuel and not for you're feeding. You're 100 right. That, <laughs> see, you're on the same page as me. Oh, okay. But it's it's not really part of our diet. It's it's, yeah. it's something that we really didn't consume. You know, during the Paleolithic period, something that it's, it was the error basically so, so prior to 10,000, 12,000 years ago. So what you're saying in ancient times, right? We were eating meat all the time. We and, did eat meat. Yes. Yeah. You know, in other words, we're good. Uh, taking game off the the range, but what what did you eat with it? Or you were just eating so much birds and duck and. But uh, a lot of them got their nutrition for that because the wild there was wild game. They were eating their natural diet. It was it was completely okay. Um, All right, so they eat. You have the meat, and, right. the, and then the berries are fine too. Right, fruits, nuts, vegetables, seeds. Right, all part of that, um, and that was a major part of their diet, along with because that's the fish, other thing fowl. that the caveman. Correct, 100%. You've got to go back to that. our roots. Yeah, you yeah. have to go back then because that's yeah. where our genetic makeup came from. So know. what you're saying, where we went wrong is when we started granaries and started farming. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Industrial it. revolution farming, yeah. And, and, and again, and not, that increased the, you know, increased the incidences of subluxation it, it, and whatever. Subluxations, yeah, the <laughs> misalignments of the spine. It, yeah. There's this um, spinal alignment goes back, dating back to the, the Egyptians. Um, um, you know, adjusting the spine. You know, it's pretty fascinating how far back it goes. Chiropractors, we are the, the masters when it comes to adjusting the spine, but it does date back that far. Right. Uh, but, you know, again, we have to be aware of the problem is not that we're eating these animals, it's what they're eating that is the problem. Now, yeah. I had my first encounter with you was at the Kiwanis Club. Yes, and I'm I sitting there very comfortable, and you were talking about the different things, and I'm saying, well, so I always thought that about corn. Right, right. I, I, I haven't been eating that much meat. I'm lucky if I eat 10 hamburgers in a year. Mm -hmm, so I was going, I, I, I'm right on page here. Yeah, this guy, you and I, we're, right, right, right. I'm already past here. Did, done, <laughs> done, did, did this, done that, whatever. And, and then you, you talked about something that totally shocked me because I just finished eating it. Mm. You, you, you talked about okay. salmon. Yes. And salmon, it's wild salmon, true wild salmon. Right. That's okay. Right. But most salmon, even the ones they display as wild, is not really wild. Right. The farm well, raised. Farm raised is, is, farm where, is where you salmon. go wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, you, can you explain that? Uh, yeah, I'd be happy yeah. to. And, and, you know, just like you said, you, you thought, you, you know, you're doing good and, and then I you find out. I just finished it. <laughs> you, know, you, get, you get depressed. And yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, my, my patients feel the same way. Yeah. Uh, but the, this is a big topic because fish is, is, is a great source of omega-3s, right? These, these anti-inflammatory fatty acids that you know, that we should be consuming on a regular basis. And even the American Heart Association recommends that we consume more fish per week. They increase our, our servings, but unfortunately not all fish is created equal. Um, and that's where you run into wild caught versus farm raised. Now the four most farm raised fish in the United States are Atlantic salmon, tilapia, catfish, and trout. Um, you really shouldn't be consuming these fish in any quantities. Um, one study it was by the American, Journal of American uh, Dietetic Association, 2008. It was a study comparing the amount of arachidonic acids. Remember we said that was you know, pro-inflammatory, um, the fatty acid that gets converted to these in inflammatory cells. Um, was comparing the amount in, just even say tilapia, three and a half ounce serving of tilapia. You know, people love tilapia, especially if they're not, you know, if they're not fish eaters, some people start with that. But unfortunately, it's, it's not a great choice. So arachidonic acid is the amount of inflammation, let's say, in that fish. They compared it to other foods. And they found a three and a half ounce serving of tilapia, there was th greater than 300 milligrams of arachidonic acid per serving. Then they compared that to, let's say, pork bacon. You think that's not such a great choice. Well, guess what? There was only 191 milligrams of arachidonic acid, so not a great choice. And is that because of the stuff we, the foodstuffs that we feed the animals? Right. You're 100 percent right. It's what we're feeding them. That's the well, we're feeding the animals. It's not that we're eating animals as right. opposed to what we feed what the animals them. that gives us this. Uh, and then we're consuming them, which is in their meat, yeah. and you know we're producing inflammation in our bodies. And then there's also the drug issue. We, we right. inject the cows to Full make them grow and bigger with hormones correct. and uh, anti, um, uh, antibiotics so they don't get mm -hmm, sick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the same thing happens to the fish. 
Right, and, and fish, they're, they're, and especially they're, in, they're throwing pills in there to keep yeah, them alive they, in these swimming pools because there's too many fish. It's not natural. You put humans yeah. that close together, what happens? You know, you get you disease. get sick because you're on yeah. top of each other. And these fish actually they get something called <laughs> sea lice because yeah. of it. You know, it doesn't sound appetizing, does it? So right, they have to kill off the sea lice and use chemicals and so forth. And yeah. you know, they feed fish. You know, especially tilapia, they feed it soy. What fish eats soy? You know, not to joke about it, but I don't see soy growing on the bottom of the ocean, do you? No. You know, they eat, they eat algae. That's what the salmon eat, algae. That's what they convert to the omega-3s, and right. that's why it's beneficial for our health. Um, but unfortunately, they're feeding them these, you know, these soy products, and that's one thing that tilapia, is, if for some reason, is very efficient at converting and digesting the soy into that arachidonic acid and then inflammation. But again, they're not supposed to be eating that. So uh, what do you recommend? rather than eating salmon and... Uh, we well, can eat it, just make sure it's wild caught. You know, definitely do that. If you, know, you have wild um, uh, salmon, that would be fine. Is a better choice, yeah. And, yeah. You know, these oh, are things... What other fish? Uh, codfish has got less... Codfish, okay. And, and yeah. it's important to know even the different types of salmon as well. Some have higher ratios of omega-3s to omega-6s, like a sockeye salmon or coho salmon. Better choices. Really, in general, even if it's wild caught, stay away from the big game fish. You know, shark, you know, even like tilefish and grouper, swordfish, these fish have high levels of mercury, and that's something that you really want to stay away from because it's a neurotoxin. Well, do they go around the ocean saying, hmm, mercury? No, they, <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes they get it naturally, you yeah. know, underwater volcanic activity, but usually you'll see it more with the, the larger fish because those are the big game fish. They eat all the smaller fish. They have time to really accumulate high concentrations oh, accumulate, over time. Yeah. It's really the best fish, especially the smaller ones that not too many people like, but um, herring, um, sardines, high ratios of omega 3s. They're small fish, very low levels oh, of sardines contaminants. Sardines are good for you. Fantastic. Oh, okay. So keep I it up with that. I always like sardines, yeah, but so nobody else likes them. So. <laughs> yeah, not too many <laughs> <Sorry>. people do. <laughs> But, okay. you know, this is stuff that I do with my family. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a doctor that's, what I tell my patients, I practice what I preach. I'm not, yeah. you know, do as I say, not as I do. And this is what my, my children eat. I mean, I have 21-month-old triplets, and, and they're eating wild-caught salmon. You know, they eat whatever me and my wife eat. Right. And, and basically, we try to go back to roots of a paleolithic diet during that time frame, what caveman ate. And, you know, a lot of it is it's the, an anti-inflammatory diet. Do you diet. grow your own vegetables in the back? I try. I don't even have a backyard. I'm still renting. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so fortunately, no. All right. But even if, if you look at civilizations, those that do their own farming, there's no pesticides or herbicides, and that's, that's a major part of it too, as well. Yeah. Is you know it is important to eat organic to reduce your exposure to these chemicals, you know, without a doubt. Right. Um, so your your recommendation is that people um, do a lot more of that, um, you know, uh, do their own gardening. Uh, and, and do like a loss control type right. of thing. Right, and it's not, it don't, it, some people get depressed, like, oh my God, I can't eat anything. But, you know, I'll, I'll rattle off a list of foods that, that are anti-inflammatory. Well, nuts and things are fine, right? A perfect well, example. What type of nuts, though? We get, see, a lot of people get mistaken about what is actually a nut. Right. I mean, some people look at me and they say, you're, he's you're a nut. No, <laughs> no, no, I'm saying uh, peanuts are not nuts. It, it, and that's not necessarily, necessarily yeah. such a great choice. And peanuts, yeah. too, is associated with aflatoxin. There's other things. There's better nuts that give you higher ratios of, of omega-3s to omega-6s. But a, wal a walnut's walnut perfect. Almond is another great almonds, choice. You know, right. pecan, you know, but really, walnuts and almonds have a great ratio. Sometimes I just kind of right. narrow it down to those. So that's, that's great for a snack. I mean, something that people can eat um, you know, throughout the day. And just be careful. They are high in calories, so don't try to consume too much of them, but you know, it's a great example. But that can be like one of the meals. You know, you're, you have breakfast, but what would you take? What would take the place of Cheerios in the morning? Great example. Yeah, 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 you have a little bit of salmon in the morning. Yeah, or sorry, why not? Who says you can't eat salmon, salmon in the morning? Okay. Right? Well, one, a great thing is eggs. I mean, eggs are fantastic. They're the perfect protein. Have all 20 amino acids, um, and even better choice you can get. So what you're saying? Eggs. What you're saying is that the uh, eggs have had a bad rap. You, you're right. It's if changed it, a lot over the years. Don't yeah. eat the yolk because the cholesterol, and yeah. eat the whole egg. Um, it is beneficial. So certain uh, components an egg a yolk. day is not is okay. necessarily a bad deal. No, it's not. It's not. Well, and, and if you're going two and three, it's another story. Yeah, but, uh, but egg a day is completely fine. You know, yeah. I have a hard-boiled egg, you know, a, a, yeah. a day. My kids have it, you know, as well. But, you know, consume the whole egg. And also, again, a better choice is omega-3 eggs. They do have them now in the grocery stores. Right. Um, you can get them. So it, that's a better choice to have that 
you know, anti-inflammatory Now, what would you eat it. for lunch if you're not ham on a ham sandwich, then what? <laughs> uh, in general, a lot of, some anti-inflammatory foods, you know, fruits and vegetables, whatever you're consuming, you know, right. say for lunch and dinner, can be kind of the same thing. You know, have obviously some organic salad, which is really important. Put some, put some salmon, a wild-caught salmon on top of it. You said you can't have that. Right. Or, you know, a lean beef or chicken. Um, you can put that on top of a salad or just have a side of your favorite fruits and vegetables with spices. You know, certain spices are anti-inflammatory, such as turmeric or, you know, ginger. Um, also, you know, garlic. These have anti-inflammatory properties to them, so when you're cooking with them, essentially you're doing some good for your health, you know. Um, also, you know, aside with these fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, the wild game, right, is, is a better choice, the wild-caught salmon. Um, it's not all bad. You know, alcohol is anti-inflammatory. You know, we're Italian. I mean, what's, yeah. what's wrong with a little bit of red wine? It does have anti-inflammatory right. aspects to it and stout right. beer. When you have that one to two glasses, you start stepping beyond that, it sort of has right. the opposite uh, effect. Right. Uh, but, you know, it's not all bad. You right. know, dark so chocolate a, is another one, too, right. as well. It's anti-inflammatory. So red wine is good. Yes, red White wine is, good. is not good. No, <laughs> red wine is better. <laughs> well, the, it's the reservatrol that's in red wine. Right. Powerful antioxidant um, as well as anti-inflammatory. Um, and you're consuming tea. I mean, green tea is very beneficial for your health. Right. Um, just trying to make sure it's more on the organic side to, to make sure you don't have the contaminants of the pesticides. In there but generally well. speaking, grains, no good. Yeah, generally speaking, grains, unfortunately, really limit your quantity. I mean, I'm not a purist, but, yeah. you know, again, we just consume way too much of it. And unfortunately, look what's on the bottom of our food pyramid. Eat your whole grains. You know, have more and more servings a day they're promoting. And you actually really want to limit that um, because that inflammatory aspect associated with it. And again, this is going to re help reduce your risk of, you know, these chronic diseases that we face today. The heart disease, the cancer, the asthma, you know, these autoimmune diseases, MS, all have inflammatory components to them. So by putting these processed foods... So you by get away from it, inflammation, you're going to live longer. It, it, it's definitely a part to it. Inflammation, increased antioxidants is, is a major part of having a longer, healthier life, without a doubt. Right. Yeah. And how is that connected with chiropractic again? You know, in other words, you're more likely to have back problems if you're not eating right? Uh, I mean, you can, even real simple, and you know, if, if you have more chronic inflammation, it's actually going to increase pain. Um, not to, to get sidetracked, but here... Arthritis? What, yes. What, and what do people mostly do for arthritis? What do they take? Then they take aspirin or Advil, right, right. and, and not, that causes other problems. You're exactly right. Not, not bashing pharmacology definitely has its place. Uh, but most people go towards, you know, right. the, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, you know, like you just Advil, Aleve, you know, Tylenol, uh, Motrin, all these are... And they all work on your liver. Yes, unfortunately. And they weaken the liver, mm -hmm. they weaken your pancreas. And the kidneys pancreas, as well. Or, yeah. and, and, and these, they do work. The reason they work is because they inhibit an enzyme that produces inflammation. Now, according to... But, uh, but the more of that you have, the less likely you're going to make 92. <laughs> that's, you're more that's likely right. to make, uh, you know, 72 and maybe, uh, and you're pushing it, getting to 80. Right, it's, this is definitely not going to help things. But yeah, because it, uh, they have their... Uh, they, they, have, they, have, they have side effects to them, definitely. You know, yeah. New England Journal of Medicine, I believe it was 1994, how you know, consuming these non-steroidal anti-inflammatories increases kidney damage. New England Journal of Medicine, 1999, um, increases intestinal bleeding, um, taking these, these non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. They kill 16,500 people a year. Um, and that's just for literally taking it for two conditions, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and osteoarthritis. I mean, that's a biggie. And not bashing pharmacology whatsoever. It definitely has its place. But here's what you can do even better. Here's a supplement, fish oil. Uh, this is a big topic today. You know, over the, there's been getting a lot of press in the past couple of years. If you take three fish oils a day, three, which I, I, I do too, but if three, you take three... You, fish oils has yeah. potent anti-inflammatory effects. It right. reduces inflammation naturally and induces the, it reduces these inflammatory pathways naturally with no side effects. Um, here was Journal of Surgical Neurology, 2008. Um, it was basically comparing fish oils, or, or what's the active ingredient of fish oils, EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid. I was comparing that to non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. And EPA beat the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories 88% of the time. I mean, those numbers are big. And again, not bashing pharmacology was effective 12% of the time. You know, people do need them, but 88% of the time, you can do that naturally with no side effects. I'm going that route most of the time. Um, but it is, is important in regards to the types of fish oils you take, where you're getting it from. This is very important. 
Um, I really, you know. Yeah, hopefully not you're not getting it from the Gulf. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> right, in light of what's happened over yeah. the years, yes. But, you know, it's important the type of fish that it's come from. You know, it has to really stay. Um, you should, you know, very, very well be aware of where the source is coming from. It's best from anchovies and sardines, like we discovered before, those smaller fish. They have less contaminants. It should be from a reputable company that, um, it's a being, that it's a pharmaceutical grade fish oil. They're taking out all the mercury, the toxins, dioxins. This is very important. Um, and that these, their other components will, the, that it's in the right ratios, and, you know, because there are, you know, EPA and DHA are components of fish oils. There's the, now, this is sold in most uh, uh, stores, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like Stop and Shop. And right, all, every, like it's that. everywhere. Uh, so, uh, what you're saying is, it should be on the label where they come from. And mm -hmm. now, isn't there a krill or a grill or a krill oil? Krill, krill, that's, krill oil. That's, uh, um, they say a lot. that's more uh, effective. You're getting a lot of press. I haven't come yeah. across too many research studies on it. Um, definitely wouldn't write it off. I'm always out there to try and to find information on it. There are a lot of reputable doctors out there that do promote krill oil as another source too as well. Um, it's, you know, it comes from krill and it's what whales eat. And supposedly it's just a little bit more higher potent and it contains a natural antioxidant with it that makes it um, well, higher potent as well. I think that does it right there, you know. If the whales are eating, now look how big they hey, got. Hey, that's it. <laughs> you got to follow what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, because uh, they're hanging around longer than we are, that's right? That's right, that's right. But, you know, we, we, yeah. like you said, there's so many varieties of these fish oils. Yeah. And, you know what, I very rarely have ever recommended, a, you know, anything that's out in these large chain stores, from your CVSs to your, you know, your, your Costco, it's just usually a poor quality. It's not necessarily pharmaceutical grade. There's some toxins in there. And then again, you have to take this in the right ratios and the right quantities for it to really be effective. Um, according to the studies, if you take around three to 5,000 milligrams a day, um, that's where it becomes you know, therapeutically beneficial. And you know, most of these the fish oils that are out there, you'd have to consume literally 10 plus pills a day if, um, to consume those numbers. So I go with reputable companies, what my family takes, what I recommend to my patients, and we coach them how to take it accordingly, because it is important how you take it. Um, if, you, if you combine it with other supplements or food and so forth, um, makes all the difference sometimes as well. Yeah, like um, uh, magnesium and uh, calcium pills. Yeah. Uh, calcium is another thing. Uh, what, what's your opinions on um, on calcium? Cal calcium. You know, we we, we uh, dissipate after I guess the age of forty or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. We're losing calcium. Right. You know, uh, over time, uh, initially slowly, and that's eventually leads to arthritis, uh, or it might be. I think more importantly than, than calcium is. It, is vitamin D actually? Vitamin D is getting a lot of press um, over, the, over the past couple of years. It, so it, you're saying right, go go right back to the milk? It, it, yeah. <laughs> no, not a good source. Vitamin D is from the sun. That's the sunshine oh, vitamin. Vitamin D. Stay that in is, the sun a little more. That is the main source. Yeah, people are, are, you know, not to get off topic, but people are getting afraid of the sun, or they should fear well, it. It's their skin enemy. Cancer. But you know, level, it's been shown in certain studies that vitamin D can reduce your risk of skin cancer if your levels, your blood levels, are at adequate. As long as you don't overdo it. Correct. You know, that's that's where that that's saying yeah. everything in moderation okay. holds a lot of Go out there for half an hour. Don't go out there for three and a half. Hundred percent right. All you need is really 20 minutes in the summer. Summer full right. body exposure. No um, tanning oils or, or sunscreen. Do you have a website lot. you can say quickly? Sure. Um, you go to Minoni Chiropractic. M um, A N O N I Chiropractic dot com. And, and there's stuff on the on the diet there. Right? Yeah, there's stuff on, on diet. And if, if people want to shoot me an email, that I'd be happy to address. All it. right. Well, they're waving to me goodbye. So Great thank time. you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I want me. to thank the viewers for tuning in the community for. Forum. Tune in next week, same time, same station, and I'm sure we'll have another interesting program. Good night for now, and we'll see you then.